Hey guys, Big Red 3 Tennis here again to uh, quickly go over the Extreme Rules show and the ECW Super 8. I hate my hair. I know I always complain about my hair like I'm some prissy 13 year old chick half the time of these videos, but really, I don't like this haircut. It's gonna get cut tomorrow, I think. Um, but yeah, let's get into this. Um, Osama Bin Laden is dead. I think every American should start their very next video. I don't care if your next video is two weeks from now. Your very next video, I think you should start by saying, Elon's dead. Yay. Um, very, very important to me and my family because, well, I haven't had people who died in that incident. I know a lot of people who've lost people who've died in that incident, and I almost lost someone in that incident. So, big deal to me. And that's kind of why this review is really late. I had to watch the news, obviously, as I'm sure most people did. Or people who, you know, they made their they made the review immediately after the show and then watched the news. Either way. <clears throat> um, let me talk about First Punk Extreme Rules. This was a great show, you know. I, I've i always said that the April pay-per-view is, is usually really, really good. Because it's basically WrestleMania a second time. Like, all the mistakes that happen on WrestleMania, they get a second chance to fix them. Usually every year, with the exception of a few matches, the matches that happen at Extreme Rules are better than the matches that happen at WrestleMania. Now, I'm not saying that the April pay-per-view is always better than WrestleMania. That's not the case. It was this year. It was two years ago. Um, three years ago... Ah, fuck no. Uh, 2007, it was there as well. Uh, 2006, close, but... Not that God match maybe kind of prevented it from reaching that level, but the April pay per view usually is really really good, and um, it's this unfortunately is the end of the peak for WWE. If you've known me for the longest time, I've always said WWE has their peak from December through April, the WrestleMania season, and add the April pay per view because, like I said, it, <clears throat> they basically do WrestleMania over again and they do it better. Like I can say, let me just look at all the matches. Every single match on this card, every single one, with the exception of, of, no, 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 literally every single match on this card was better than the match they had, than the match they had at WrestleMania. That's why. Um, but yeah, let's get into the show really quickly. Randy Orton versus CM Punk last my setting match. I thought this was really, really good. I actually thought this was almost great. I gave it three and three quarter. Really enjoyed it. Orton really hit a second gear. A lot of people on Twitter were saying, you know, this proves why Punk should be should have been pushed a long time ago. You know, he's a star. And he looks like one too. And yeah, I'll give you credit. He does come off really well. And he he can carry anybody. I mean, really, he can he carried Orton through a really, really good match. He can make anybody look good. So definitely props to Punk there. But I, I thought this match was really good. They timed the finishers well. They timed the action well. They timed the lump, the, the, what do you call those things? Singapore Canes very well. I liked the finish. Um, cool stuff. I enjoyed the match. Three and three quarter. Ended the feud very well. Nice fitting ending. Good stuff. Sheamus versus Kofi Kingston tables match. This was nice. I gave it two and three quarter. You know, it could have been a little longer, but I really liked the finish. And considering how this match came out of nowhere, but um, I do understand their point. Uh, like Dave Meltzer was saying, you know, they're, they're going to be pushing Sheamus as the top heel most likely on SmackDown. So this was a way to get the title off of him without him having to take the take the pin. So in that sense, I can understand. Kofi Kingston did a really nice did a really nice leg drop. I think I've said too much, but <laughs> it, it, it was a fine match. Two and three quarter stars. Next we get the country whipping match. I didn't think this was bad at all. I gave it two and a quarter actually. I thought it was somewhat enjoyable. I mean, come on. There were with the talent involved and with how bad that match was at WrestleMania was, this was much shorter. I think this was like six, seven minutes. It was it was very nice. It wasn't very botchy. You know, Jerry Lawler and Jack Swagger worked most of the match. Then Jim Ross tagged in. He, he did his stuff to Michael Cole. He did his stuff to Jack Swagger. And then the finish was immediately after that. It was fine. I gave it two and a quarter stars. People are upset. I heard people complaining that the feud is not over. I've known for a while that the feud was going to continue, especially by if you if you saw Monday. You know, here's a little hint. Rarely, rarely, rarely in WWE will you see the face dominate the heel, the the go home show, and the face wins at the pay per view. It's happened before. I remember Danielson when he got the title from Miz. He had made him tap that the Raw before. But most of the time, if the face is dominating the Raw before, that means the heel is going to win. 
at the pay-per-view most of the time. And when I saw JR and Jerry Lawler get the uh, get their like revenge on Michael Cole, I was like, yeah, these guys are losing at the pay-per-view. But hey, I don't I don't really care. I mean, this feud is nowhere near as good as it once was, but it doesn't to me it's not negative either. To me I can watch it and be like, you know what, Jim Ross we get Jim Ross commentating from time to time because of this feud, so I'm more than willing to tolerate it if we get that. Cody Rhodes versus Rey Mysterio. This was a very good match. Thoroughly enjoyed this. My biggest problem, I say, I say this all the time, with Falls Count Anywhere matches, and especially in the WWE, is that they mainly just brawl around the ring, maybe a little bit in the crowd, and then the pinfall happens in the ring. This was different as they actually, they brawled in the crowd, but a lot in the crowd, like key areas and then they actually went backstage which I thought was very very nice like my favorite false kind of match of all time Ultramantis Black versus Aries from Chikara last year they brawled in the parking lot they brawled on the stage they brawled backstage they brawled everywhere they really made you think hey it could happen anywhere and this I thought gave that same impression that's why I gave it I believe I gave it three and a half three and a quarter I really 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 enjoyed this match had a lot of fun with it so yeah definitely Great, great job from both men. Really enjoyable. Next, we got Layla versus Michelle McCool. I thought this was a fine match. I gave it two and a half stars. I actually thought, I didn't even think it was the worst match on the show. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, it's not a negative to me. To me, it's a positive. There's, there was nothing on the show that was negative, which is first in a long time. I thought this was fine. You know, it did everything it needed to do. There, It wasn't really that botchy. I actually really liked the finish. Basically, Michelle McCool hits the Styles Clash. And Lay she goes to pin Layla, and Layla reverses into a roll-up for the win. I've seen that finish before. Rey Mysterio did it to Eddie Guerrero at the Great American Match 2005. I liked it then, and I like it now. To me, it's better than kicking out of a finisher. Instead of kicking out of a finisher, you kind of catch the person off guard. And I can—I don't know. I, I just really like it. When, I really like it when they finish it that way. To me, it's better than just kicking out of the finisher. And so I enjoyed it. And yeah, two and a half. I thought it was fine. And then the post-match segment was awesome. Actually, I'll say amazing. To be awesome slash amazing because that describes the person. Karma, for those who don't know already, made her debut after this match. She had great theme music, great theme music, great facials. And then Michelle McCool was in the ring crying in terror. Like she was terrified. And Karma came in. Michelle tried to run away. Karma grabbed her, gave her the implant buster. And yeah, then just smiled and laughed. It was amazing. They really made you feel like, holy shit, this one's a badass. And then they showed the women in the back. Like watching on television, and they were all like really scared. Great, great. This is exactly how you build a star. For those of you who did not know, Triple H was put in charge of of how these guys debut in the WWE. He was in charge of Sin Cara's debut, all the video packages, as Amazing Kong with her video packages. So for those of you who always shit on Triple H, he he gets credit there, and he really made Karma look like looks like such a such a out. Such a total superstar already. She already looks like such a big deal. So great job. Great job there. So yeah, that that match I gave two and a half, but the post match thing was great. Then we got Alberto Del Rio versus Christian. Pretty sure you all know the story right now. Christian did win the title. But I will want to talk first about in this match. I thought it was great that literally through the entire match, no matter what Christian did, he would knock the guy down, grab a ladder, and try to go grab the belt. Like, you always want to make the crowd think that you're always trying to win. You don't pick them up just to do more spots. You always make sure you're trying to win constantly so the sport looks real. And it's a great it's a great form of psychology. And Christian did it every time. And the crowd bought into it little by little. Like, they, as the match progressed, they kept getting more and more and more excited that he kept climbing up the ladder. His faces were great. He played to the crowd very well. Del Rio was great. They both took some great spots in this match. Great bumps from both men. The Brodus Clay stuff I thought worked. And then Edge came out, which I know a lot of people weren't too happy with. But to me, I didn't care because Brodus Clay had just interfered. So to me, this wasn't a big deal that Edge came out and interfered. And uh, he didn't even really interfere. He just honked the horn. And then Christian knocked, a knocked Del Rio off the ladder onto Brodus Clay and Ricardo Rodriguez on the floor. Then Christian grabbed the title while Edge watched. Christian celebrated. The fans popped big, by the way. This... Let me say this. I'm sorry if you were at the show. This was a shit crowd. This was a very bad crowd. But during this match, they went crazy for Christian. I mean, he does live in Tampa. But as I said on Twitter, so does a big portion of the WWE roster. They A lot of the WWE guys live in Tampa. But still, yeah, Christian does live in Tampa. But still, he got a humongous reaction. For those who say that Christian didn't deserve to be the main event and he should only be an upper mid-carder, I'm looking at you, True Slayer. Um, this isn't directed at you, though. But uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> not you specifically, but there are people, because 
I've seen other people who say he shouldn't be in the main event, not because, like you say, you know, he doesn't he doesn't come off as a main event or doesn't present himself well, but there are people who say he's not over enough to be a main eventer, which is just beyond fucking ridiculous. Not just tonight, but if you saw his program with Cena back in 2005 when the fans were into him and they wanted to see that match, and then Jericho came in and kind of dissembled that stuff. So really, he's over with the fans. He's a great baby face. He's a great wrestler. He's... I am so happy that he's world champion. Now, I know this isn't going to last. I'm not in the first grade. I know he'll probably lose it to Orton soon. What are you going to do? But I'm, at least he gets this. I mean, come on. This means something. And I'm very, very, very happy for Christian. Four-star main event, definitely. Not just that the match was great, because it was. But that post-match segment was really something memorable. Which is what you want to buy in the pay-per-view. I said this before. Every fucking pay-per-view... I mean, no pay-per-view, match quality-wise... Is worth forty bucks. It, it rarely, even if even if it's like a nine out of ten, forty bucks is a lot of money. However, memorable moments, memorable moments like Danielson coming back at SummerSlam, shit like that that you get to see live. That stuff is priceless. That stuff you can't get anywhere else. Live moments, holy shit, that just happened. And this was one of those, along with the Awesome Kong stuff. Live moments that made you feel like, oh my god, that was amazing. That stuff is why pay-per-views are important. And I thought we had two of them on this show, especially the Christian stuff. So that adds points to the pay-per-view. Then we got Kane, the big show versus the core. This is your basic filler match. It was the same filler match that I saw at Survivor Series last year. Um, I actually thought this was fine. The crowd seemingly was... Tr I remember when Ezekiel Jackson was working with Kane, the crowd seemingly tried to get into it. But this was your basic filler squash match. They even brought in some guys from FCW and NXT to be Lumberjacks. Thought that was kind of a waste of time, but whatever. Um, I gave it a star and three quarter. It was a nothing match, but it was actually better than most nothing matches. Then we got The Miz versus Cena versus Morrison. This was a very good cage match. I gave it three and three quarter stars. Really enjoyed it. A lot of great action by all three men. Um, they, they made great use of the triple threat because usually in WWE triple threats, like Doc Pepper Classic said this, it's a singles match with a revolving door. This one, they were kind of, you know, with a cage, they're kind of forced to wrestle. And it worked out really well. Like, constant sequences of, like, Miz always trying to escape, Morrison going after Cena, then Morrison would go escape, Cena going after, Cena going after Miz. It was just this great, like, triple triumvirate amount of stuff going on. And it really worked. It made the match come off really well. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love the r true stuff. Again, the fans kind of sucked. Um, they didn't, but still, I, I thought, and I thought it was a little bit overkill too. I thought he should have just slammed the door on Morrison, maybe give Morrison his finisher and escape the cage. But he slammed the door on Morrison, um, need Morrison, gave Morrison the spinal spiral type, even gave a kick to Cena. I don't know what that was all about. I mean, if he was going to do it to Miz as well, then I can understand. But just to Cena, eh, I didn't really see the point of that. And then he escaped the cage, and and the announcers tried to put over the fact, had he been in this match and he did that, he would have won the title. And I gotta say, our truth came off looking like a big deal in this match. Him and Morrison both. This is the one match where I can say that a match, it didn't officially make stars out of John Morrison and our truth but they both looked really, really well. And they are, and it is steps in the right direction. And then the finish with Cena and Miz, where they're brawling on top, and Cena FU's Miz off the turnbuckle. The fans really didn't care. And this crowd didn't like Cena, but I've seen I've seen crowds that don't like Cena that at least show emotion when the final stretch of a match. This they didn't really. It was just kind of like, and Cena kind of FU's him off the top, and that's it, and Cena was the title. Which, granted, they put over the fact that Cena hasn't been champion in almost a year, which to me, I thought about it. I was like, wait, wait, wait really? Uh, oh, wow. I guess you're right. Um, but to me, the crowd didn't really care. So to me, as a fan, it didn't feel like that big of a deal. Even though I understand it's a title change, it's somewhat significant. Um, but yeah, still, this was a, this was a definitely a definitely a, a really good match, three and three quarter. I'd give the show an eight. Great ladder match, really really good main event, really really good opener. You know, a, a really fun Falls Count Anywhere match, a good tables match, yeah, a decent tables match, a, a cut troop match, which was fine for what it was, a really good women's match, and two, like I said, two moments, moments that make pay-per-views. So 8 out of 10 on this one. Great show. Definitely order the replay, in my opinion, actually. I definitely think it's worth it. I mean, yes, you might look at the rating, 8 out of 10, but I think the, the Christian winning the title is something that once you see the whole match and how they build to it, that's still something that you can kind of relive again, even though it's not live, but it's still something. All right, that's it for me. I should know that's not it for me. What am I doing? I still have to review the ECW Super 8. Um, I talked about the show, my psychology, psychology video. 
Um, and the show, me and like Dave Logano watched. I think we're the only two people in the whole world that, on Twitter at least, that watched that show because I don't think anybody else was into that show. We both watched it. We both gave our running commentary on it. Um, all right. Uh, he didn't. He was not a fan of the comment. For those of you, <laughs> what am I saying? For those of you who do not know who uh, who uh, Dave Lagana is, Dave Lagana is the he's uh, one of the uh, main executive producers of HDNet and one of one of the creative guys back there as well. And he was checking out the show. And we both I thought it was kind of funny because I was like, hmm, someone else is watching the show. Yeah, this should be interesting. Um, and I think I think the show was good, but very disappointing, and definitely had a lot of problems with it. Um, definitely better than last year's, that's for sure. I thought all of the tournament matches were very enjoyable. The ones that the ones that aren't three stars or aren't even three and a half stars is because they didn't get much time. But I still thought it all came off really, really well. So let's get into the tournament very quickly. Adam Cole fought Sammy Callahan in a very good opener. Very good. Not as good as their best of the best final, but still really, really, really good stuff. Thoroughly enjoyed this. And very happy to see um, to see Sammy Callahan to see Adam Cole advance. I thought for sure Callahan was winning this whole thing. Him or Aries or or Champa. Well, Champa in reality I knew was probably gonna win this thing. But um, Aries, him and Aries, just uh, I thought they were my two favorites. And to see Callahan go out first, I thought it was kind of shocking. But it was great because that means I got to see more of Adam Cole. And if Austin Aries won, which I kind of thought he was going to, that means I could see an Adam Cole Austin Aries match, which I was really looking forward to. So very, very, very happy to see that and to see Adam Cole advance. They had a very good match, great use of finishers. This is all three of Adam Cole's matches were the best matches on the show for sure. They all also they made great use of spots. I'm not gonna lie, it it was the flow wasn't all there. However, at the same time, you know. Both those spots kind of, they each kind of built upon each other. And they each spot progressively got the crowd more and more and more into the match. So to me there, it's excused. And especially this first one, I thought it worked out really well. So three and a half or three and a quarter for the opener. The really good match. The are Austin Aries versus Bobby Shields. This was fine, but this was way too long. This was like 15, 16 minutes, which I didn't think was necessary at all. Especially since the opener only got like 10 minutes. And a lot of the matches were cut short. I really, this, this this disappointed me the most about the tournament because I thought the match was fine, but it just went too long. Bobby, Fe it was, I don't know whether they're calling a squash match or not. Bobby Shields worked over Aries for the entire match and then Aries got in a minute of offense and won. I mean, I don't know how to classify that. I guess it's not a squash because Bobby Shields got in a lot of offense, but Aries beat him like, like that. But yeah, still two and a half stars. It was whatever. Then we got Tommaso Champa versus Rich Swan. This was a fun match, you know, like... Tommaso Ciampa tried to power his way through the match, and Rich Swan tried to fly to take down Ciampa throughout the match. Sort of similar to like Jay Briscoe and Takeshi Morishima from, uh, what was that show called? Fight the Roxbury. Very similar to that, but the match was only like six minutes long. But I still gave it three stars for a six-minute match. But they had a good story. So yeah, good stuff there. Then we got Shima Zion versus Shockwave the Robot. Shockwave the Robot is awesome. He really is great. And he's actually a really good wrestler too. And these guys had a fun match. Three stars. Really enjoyed it. The commentary I thought was kind of shitty here. They they overly put over how Shockwave the Robot, Robot was a gimmick. Which like Dave Lagana, I didn't agree with. Why would you blatantly tell your audience that wrestling is fake? I mean, come on. But I still thought the match was good. So I'm not going to penalize the match for it. And we, oh, my bad. To start the show off, we got a battle royal. Which I gave an... I think I gave an NA to, you know, it was a battle royal. I missed half of it. I didn't really care about it, really. I don't like any battle royals very much. It's a, it's a battle royal with a bunch of guys you don't know, so who cares? No offense to ECW. Then we got a match that really, really, really pissed me off. All right, we had all the ECWA champions versus all the TWA champions because throughout the show, they were doing an ECWA versus TWA feud. That's what the battle royal was. And this match, they had... The ECWA World Champion, Papadon, the Tag Champions, who were TJ and Kirby Mack, and the other guy, um, Chris Wilde. I, th I forget what champion he was. But we had them, and then we had the TWA Champions of <clears throat> Breaker Morant, Josh Daniels, and the Tag Champs of Damian Dragon and Matt Saigon. Now, Breaker Morant had travel issues, apparently, and he could not show up for the match. I think he arrived mid-match or something. So, anyways, throughout this match, okay, how do I say this? They're both, I don't think TWA is necessarily heel. I think it's more kind of a friendly rivalry type of thing. But 
the ECWA guys should have been face. They should have been face because, you know, it's ECWA. You want your promotion to win, not somebody else's promotion. But Brick and Moran had travel issues. So the TWA guys were outnumbered three to four. So I'm like, oh, shit, they're outnumbered three to four. Don't tell me they're going to make the TWA guys face because they have the disadvantage. Because even though that's what you do logically in this situation, it wouldn't work because ECWA is the promotion you're fighting in. And to make it top it all off to make it even more confusing, the ECWA world champion is heel. And he wasn't getting along with his teammates. And so you're just sitting there and you're just like, oh, gee, let's go TWA. And the crowd was even cheering for the TWA guys at one point. Then randomly during the match, the TWA guys became faces. And the ECWA guys became heel, became, um, the TWA guys became heel, and the ECWA guys got, became faces. And I was like, what the fuck? Now, if the ECWA guys would have just worked over the TWA guys, that would have been fine. But they had to take it to the next level. They were cheating. Chris Wilde was actually grabbing the ropes. I don't get it. Why would you cheat? It's your fucking promotion. You're representing your promotion. I understand if Papadon cheated because he's the heel, supposedly, and these other three guys are face, but the ECWA guys are using heel tactics to work over the faces, and it made no sense to me. And then, the ECWA guys win, then Papadon has a fight with his teammates because they didn't get along with him the whole match. Then, the TWA guys are just sitting in the ring, Breaker Morant comes out in like street clothes, he says, I'm sorry, and Josh Daniels puts him in a submission and hurts him for, for missing the match. You know, that at least such a bad impression. You leave that match feeling, wow, that really sucks to be the TWA. It, it took... All the attention off the ECWA feud that we just saw and focused it all on the TWA guys who are not the promotion that I'm watching. Breaker Morant, all right, here's what I don't get. If they plan, if Breaker Morant came during the match, that's one thing. But if he became any time before and they didn't let him wrestle, that's bullshit. Because they would have had to literally, the match ends and then the referee is supposed to, I think Breaker Morant goes and tells Josh Daniels, hey, put me in a submission. And they do it right then and there. They must have had booked that aftermath right then and there which I don't think they should have done. And also, finally, I think that even though they were out number three to four, I think the TWA guys should have been heel. The way I would have done it, you would have had Papadon not working with the team, and that causes them to lose control during the match, and the TWA guys gain control, and then eventually the other guys come to their senses and they win, and then Papadon explodes on his team as like he did after the match. And don't even do that aftermath with TWA, because all it does is make Breaker and Morant look weak and, make the ECW, and get all the attention off the ECWA guys. The psychology didn't make any sense to me. This, I just didn't like this match. I gave it... Well, the wrestling was good. The wrestling was good. But all those bullshit. Just maybe dump it down to two, two and a quarter. Then we got Adam Cole versus Austin Aries. Personal dream match for a while. It was really, really good. Uh, three and a half stars. Exactly what I expected it would be. Nothing much. More. Um, Domasa Shampa Shima's Iron. This was fine. Two and three quarter. But again, really short. This was only six minutes. I don't know why Shampa got two straight six minute matches. But whatever. Then we got Ace Darling, the first ever Super 8 Tournament winner, and Aiden Chambers, the 2008 Super 8 Tournament winner. This was alright, I didn't really like it that much. It's kind of dull in my opinion, and I didn't really care for it. Two and a half. And then we got the C uh, ECW Final, Adam Cole versus Tommaso Ciampa. This was really good, this had a lot of drama. It used a big spot during the match, the only table spot the entire show, which I think is good. And it made, it, it made the match feel like a big deal. There was a lot of drama. If you knew the story, how Tommaso Ciampa, the previous two years came runner-up in the ECWA tournament. So this was his time to, like, you know, finally get the big one. So it added a lot of drama to the match. There was a really great finish. So, yeah, really good, really good match. I'd say three and a half. Overall, I'll give the show seven. There's three really good matches. There's two other good ones. And the rest of the show kind of falls flat. But there's still a lot of good for me enough for me to give it a seven because it's only $15. Is it worth the money? I don't know. Maybe not. Honestly, I thought the show kind of disappointed. But whatever. I, thought it was, I still thought it was good. Definitely order Extreme Rules, though. 8 out of 10. And that's it for me. My voice hurts because I've been talking for 23 minutes. I'm Big Grand 3. 10. I'm out. See ya.